This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And while supplies last, if you mention Saffron Olive in your order notes, we'll hook you up with a free Saffron Olive sticker with any Card Kingdom order. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Fish 5 with me, yours truly, your host, Krim, also known as the Asian Avenger. Today, we've got a user submitted list of iRoll 20s. And uh, they submitted what is a Sultai Prime Speaker Vanifar plus Yarok the Desecrated deck. So it's a little bit like that pod deck that you've heard about. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, it's a, just a full-on just mid-range game plan. So we're going to see how well this does. It's all creatures all day long, except for the sideboard, which has the three Ashioks. Other than that, this is pretty much all creatures, something that I'm not used to. I always play quite the opposite, which is all spells and, like, zero creatures. This will be fun, but for those that don't know, uh, we got some new cards from M20 in Agent of Treachery and stuff like that. But as And, of course, Yarok himself. And, you know, before rotation, I think we got to try to see, like, I like seeing cards like Tatiova, because, like, Tatiova is going to be leaving, Hostage Taker. So we have a few ETB effects, uh, Enter the Battlefield effects, that we can really take advantage of with Yarok, like Kite Sail Freebooter. But for those that aren't aware of the two cards that I just mentioned, Prime Speaker Vanifar is a four mana... Sacrifice another creature, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to 1, plus the sacrificed creature's converted mana cost. Put that card on the battlefield and shuffle your library. Activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery, and it's a 2-4. So, with this, we get to kind of just sack our small, like, mana dorks, like Llanowar Elves, turn them into a bigger creature, and then work our ways up the ladder. And, of course... As we look through our deck grabbing whatever we need, we have cards like Yarok the Desecrated, which is a 5-mana Death Touch lifelink. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. And it is a 3-5. Yarok, probably better known as the Desecrated or Saffron Olive because it's his favorite card. Uh, but yeah, this card is huge because it's a permanent. It is not a, just a creature. It is a permanent entering the battlefield. So... Uh, I'm I'm a fan of this card, and I'm excited to see what we can do when Vanifar and Yarok team up. So without holding up any longer, let's see how it does in the queues. La meow, or is it I meow? Never mind, I don't know why I read that as an I, but let's pretend we did. All right, I roll. Let's see how we do with your deck here. I gotta I gotta give you. Look, I'm a pile gamer, so I love it when I see lots of ideas put together. Vanifar pod plus Yarok. I mean. All I wish was maybe like a Field of the Dead to make it extra greedy, but you know, I'm probably going to listen to you because, well, I'm very greedy, and greed is not good. So, we'll see how we do with this deck. I am excited though, because I mean, maybe post-rotation, we start getting more out of cards, like like Vanifar, uh, I, I, it, it could be big, who knows, Prime Speaker Vanifar could be the truth, who knows. I mean, at the end of the day, this is just a mid-range deck, which means we'll struggle against things like... I don't know. What are some things we'll struggle against? Probably feel the dead, because I don't think we pressure fast enough, but we sure as heck can try, right? All right, so opponent has played a mountain and a fanatical firebrand. Odds that this is mono red. Hmm. Monka? Hmm. Uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to probably play the land tapped, right? Because there's no reason for me to shock. All that's going to happen is that deal that makes it so fanatical firebrand kills my land off and deals me two. So I like I take two damage. You know, it's just a bad time and a half. So I'm not trying to be in that business. Not right now, at least. Cavalier, big body, down. There's a strong chance that this just gets chain whirlered, which feels bad. But, you know, what else are we going to do? Lava Runner? Sure. I got nothing. I don't even have a second black source, so... Still kind of in a real bad spot here. Wow. <laughs> you got it, opponent. What if I had a board wipe or a cry of the carnarium, you know? I, I don't, but... I don't. This is going to be a concern. Yeah. All right, we'll go ahead and just play this land tapped and hope they don't kill us next turn. Simple as that. 
I now I do have to say that this list is pretty much unmodified from what was given to me. Except for, for some odd reason, it showed that we were short one card. I don't know what it was, so... Oh boy. Look at that. Let's talk about that for a minute. So I just added another Cavalier. We do need something to sweep the board just a little bit, but... Huh. I guess we just play Nullhide. Nullhide's a solid body. We don't have anything that, like, like a Cerulean Drake to keep us in this one. Or whatever the Drake's called. We want things that don't die easily. Dream Eater, eh. Tatiova dies kind of easily. Prime Speaker feels a little slow. Llanowar Elves just feel like they're going to die all the time. Kite Cell Freebooter doesn't seem great. Vanifar is nice, though, because Vanifar is a 2-4. It being a 2-4 is pretty big. Might keep that in. Tatiova's nice, but a little expensive. I don't know. Probably go with uh, something like this. Let's get rid of Moldratha. Moldratha seems... Actually, Moldratha's a nice, big old body. Mirror Image doesn't seem great. Mirror Image seems like it's going to die quite often and easily. Well, more so when I say that, it's because like they're able to remove all of our early threats. I feel like our deck requires us to actually have creatures, and yet at the same time, all of our creatures die to every spot removal they have, which is a little concerning. At least we get to start with Llanowar Elf this time. Uh, we're on the play, so we don't get blown out by something like Fanatical Firebrand. I mean, we still can, but like at least we get a shot now at potentially getting some kind of payoff with Llanowar Elf. On the draw, I probably wouldn't keep Llanowar Elf. Well, there's Fanatical Firebrand. Right on time. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and play Paradise Druid. This allows me to... I actually, I could just hold up Paradise Druid, take two damage. If I really wanted to. Gives me another black source. My concern here is that if I get dunked on by something like Chain Whirler. Chain Whirler is going to be a problem. This is my chance to get rid of Viashino. Eh. I'll go ahead and just play Elvish Rejuvenator off this. Perfect. Play this tapped. So we got double black. It's fine. We don't... Like, at this point now, if they spend mana to remove our, our Paradise Druid, that's okay. Chain Whirler, obviously, very good value for them. Sure. So it looks like it's going to be light up the stage or something like that. Yep, yep. So there is everybody's favorite, the Steamkin. A shock? Okay. I don't hate this at all. So we get to gain all of our health back with it. Or I mean all the health back if we had shocked, but now we don't have to. Just pay the four. Right. Cool. So now we have a 4-4. Four, four. We get to play Vanifar next turn. Alright. Let's see if they have Lava Coil. The only reason why I'd want to wait is because of Lava Coil, but... Not bad. Not bad. I'm gonna go ahead and just play this now. Nab the Steamkin. This way, if they do have something, it won't matter. We already dealt with the Steamkin. They don't get to try to go off and be cute with, like, uh, Experimental Frenzy. Of course, they can still do that regardless, but... I'm afraid to play... Like, to let him untap with Steamkin, so I had to fire that off. Originally, I was just gonna go with Vanifar on this turn. Alright, so Skewer the Critics... Takes out our friendly little neighborhood pirate. I think this is just too solid, right? I mean, play Vanifar... Vanifar means what? We sack a bunch of twos, we go into threes. Our threes are only Risen Reef right now. Is that good enough? I guess it's fine because we can also play Chupacabra. We can play Chupacabra and then just sack it immediately. Alright, cool. We got rid of the wizard. So is it Experimental Frenzy time? Something that I, I think we should be adding to this is maybe like Brontodon. Oh, nice. Cool. Let me think here. I could play... Hey, you know what? I'll just go ahead and attack first. I don't think there's a point to me getting... I mean, I guess I could just go ahead and, and like, play Chupacabra and get some value out of this, but... Eh. I think I'm gonna just play Spark Double and nab an extra copy of uh, Prime Speaker. They have to choose whether or not they want to sacrifice... The Fanatical Firebrand, because if they do, they can deal me one damage, 
But Steamkin doesn't die. But I could also just choose to sack. Oh, no, no, I can't. It's at sorcery speed. But it's still fine. I, this, this is cool. Perfect. Uh, let's just go for the win. I didn't want to. I didn't want to attack there because I wanted to represent that I could still do something with Vanifar. They're gonna die either way. Sure. And that should be good game for. A... All right, we're gonna go to the next one. All right, game three. Game three. We don't have sweepers, so we need to look into. <laughs> They're just hoping that they don't get too far ahead on board. All right, on the draw, can I really afford cards like Llanowar Elves? Probably not. Um, this eats a burn spell from the opponent's hand. Mirror image, copies only a creature we control. Eh, let me think. What's good against them? Llanowar Elf just doesn't feel fast enough, but it's something that maybe we still have to keep a few copies in, but I just don't like Llanowar Elves in this matchup. I'd, I'd probably even play the Kite Sail Freebooters just to draw the burn spell from them, right? I mean, we don't have anything else that has lifelink. I, I think maybe we could play a Black Cavalier, uh, but we still just need board wipes. Maybe maybe that's like we have Chupacabra to remove some things. Uh, we have Massacre Girl if we can go up the chain fast enough as a sweeper. I think that's going to be our main way of like dealing with them. Agent of Treachery is mostly just going to be for us to steal like a Planeswalker or something like that. We don't have many things that interact with the Planeswalker other than just hitting them. And I guess we can bounce it with Dream Eater. Not bad. Wow. All right. No game three. We're up against Saint Jakey. So let's see if we uh, get another win here. I'll keep this. This is solid. I already missed these lands. I've been playing a lot of standard 2020. Uh, that's pretty much all I grinded to Mythic with this season. And it's just like, I already missed the buddy lands. Oh, untapped mana. How I'm going to miss you. All right. We're going to go and lead off with Watery Grave. Represent the obvious Demir, which you know we love in this at least from my channel and everything about me. You know I love Demir. And we're going to play some Fibblethep. They'll probably think we're Kethys, actually. <laughs> like, this looks very Kethys. All right, so the opponent's got Opt. They kept on top. Hmm. Why don't we lead off with Risen Reef? Rhineborn Cutthroat. Okay. Not exactly what I wanted, but I can I can live with this. So it looks like it's Saltai Flash. Sure. Quench. That's a line. If you've got it, you gotta do it now. Alright, there you go. Now we can just try to see if we can get there on the back of, like, what, a... I don't think Yarok will land, but we sure as heck can try, right? There's no way they don't decide. Like, they're, they're no, there's no way they're not tanking. You're going to counter this if they have something. All right, cool. So no attacks. Pass it back. Do they have another counter spell for us is the question. I probably could have blocked that with Fibblethep, to be completely honest. Alright, so at least now we know they don't have a counter spell. They probably just got the other blue source they've been looking for. Um, let's go ahead and put that into play. Enters tapped. Mill the rest. And then now, we have something that's worth blocking. All right, so they don't have something like Dire Fleet, uh, whatever, Poisoner, the Pirate. Let's play Elvish Rejuvenator. Okay. Paradise Druid. Okay. So at any point now, if we could just draw a solid body. We have enough to chump with, actually. I'm okay with this. They can choose whether or not they want to block. That's cool. Alright, now we just gotta hopefully get on board. Yeah. I mean, we knew they had the alpha pack, right? Like, that was just a known thing. We just gotta keep attacking through. 
See if I can get my Cavalier of Thorns to die sometime soon. But if it does, strong chance that whatever I try to cast off of it does not resolve. Okay. I'm going to send it in. Wow. That's a big wolf. Okay. Strong chance that whatever we play isn't going to resolve, so... We'll just take something that has flash. At least we can, can like reset the Brineborn. Unfortunately, the Night Pack Ambusher might just go too like wide for us. That's two wolves a turn. And then they can cast something after the wolf triggers happen. Interesting. They probably have another wolf pack thing, right? What is that? That's 11, 15. We die if we block that way, obviously. If they show me another wolf pack, that's, that's pretty brutal. At least they don't get two more wolves out of it. Yep. That's rough. Not much I can do. I gotta take my chances, right? Because we're sitting on a bunch of lands. So how do I win here? Can I even win here? Let's do this on their upkeep. So what am I bouncing? Cavalier. Uh, what does Tatiova do for us? So Tatiova allows us to draw cards of five and five. We'll chance it. I have to bounce this back, bounce the wolf back, but the wolf doesn't do anything, so I gotta get rid of this card. Sure. Okay, GG's. You got it. Too many wolves. Not enough uh, ways for us to interact with them, unfortunately. So we'll go to the next one. So we know that's gonna resolve. Kite Sail Freebooter allows us to get free information on what's in their hand. Lil Uzi, Tatiova, probably not. Prime Speaker seems a bit slow. Chupacabra is decent. Mirror Image, once again, just another card that's a little bit slow. Fibblethep, eh. It's not much of a, a real, like, card at all, so I'm gonna probably get rid of that. Muldratha, no. Zani, no. I'm gonna get rid of that. I mean, I guess Zani can allow us to, like, maybe get through some wolves. I guess I go down a... No, Kite Sail's pretty decent. Requires us to have a threat, so they could always just blow it up. Okay, what else don't I want here? Agent of Treachery gives us a wolf, but that's not hard for them to get back, because they'll probably play things like Unsummon. So Agent of Treachery probably goes out in this matchup. Vanifar, obviously, though, a slow card. Can get there. Allows us to go up the chain. We have a very ridiculously slow hand. So we get to turn two Llanowar Elf. I'll keep it. I'm, I think we have a shot, right? I mean, Llanowar Elf on turn two. We have Carnage Tyrant. If we can get that down early enough, which we can. I wish we had the mana right now to play the Llanowar Elf, but I think we still can get there with this hand. As long as it doesn't get ripped apart. Alright, so we have blue mana. Like, what are the odds that they actually try to counter my next threat here? Alright, so next turn we get Carnage Tyrant. And then that should be good enough. No need to attack, we'll just pass. Aether Gust is the only thing that stops them right now. Or stops us. And we know this resolves, but Aether Gust is the only thing that helps them. Cool. So we've done our job, so now we just attack in with the Paradise Druid. They can trade in if they want. I don't really care. Like, we've already done our job here. Let's see what they got in hand. If they counter this, that means they're not playing the Ambush Pack Wolf. A turn or this turn sure assassin's trophy dive down it's fine we can take multiple copies of this so interesting that's fine we'll take the tyrant scorn because at least with tyrant scorn this forces them into a position where they're gonna have to use assassin's trophy to get him back and assassin's trophy ramps us all right cool 
I'm just gonna go ahead and play this other. So they're gonna get their wolf this turn. Unfortunately. I guess I should have swung out, right? Because if I swing out, I think that's lethal. Or at least puts them on one. Action. Sure. So are they going to block this turn with that wolf? Alright, so they are not. So they're going to wait one more turn, which gives them the wolf they need. But they still have to triple block at some point. Or they could block with two wolves. That's fine. If I swing out here... So they send two wolves here, one there. They bounce something back, they kill one, they get another one. Only one gets through, and they still have all their wolves. Yep, still gotta do it. Here we go. If I had swung out last turn, I think I would have had lethal. Yep, double wolves. Kill one. Sure. Up. Oh. that. Auto tapper got him again. Sure. And then we still have one point of damage to spill over. So, all right, cool. So now we get the next, get to the next match. Jeez, night put night pack ambusher is kind of a pickle. It's kind of a pickle. I don't want to lie to you. Is this fast enough? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Maybe we could just get there off a bunch of solid bodies. I mean, their their pirate counter spells pretty good against us. They definitely have cards that are good against us. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll run it. Uh, I'm gonna probably just lead off with Paradise Druid. Okay, you got it. So they bottomed. We did not have the qua the ridiculous amount of mana dorks that we needed. But I'm gonna go ahead and just play Paradise Druid anyways. Maybe they counter it. Maybe they don't. Okay, cool. All right, so Brineborn. Do I ever? Is there a world where I block the Brineborn? I think I would. If they attack, I would block easily. No questions asked. Sure. Let's go ahead and play a Risen Reef. Nice. Okay. So we have something that can swing through this upcoming turn if we want to. Or we can go ahead and just play Kite Sail Freebooter, play Risen Reef again, you know, rip whatever counterspell they might have. No attacks. This allows us to play next turn a 5 mana spell. Huh. Alright, well, let's just play Shifting Ceratops. All right, Assassin's Trophy. That's pretty good. Take the action. It actually kind of worked out for us, right? Let's get another green source just in case we, we don't find any more lands. That kind of worked out for us. Only because of uh, how bad we needed... Well, I mean, like, they needed to have that answer exactly. N not much else kind of deals with it. And we cut them off of playing the wolf. Actually, can I afford that? Yeah, I, I can. I'm gonna have to try to take five from this. Let's see what we got here. Kite sail freebooter. We're gonna lead off with this because if maybe they tap down to play like frilled mystic or something, we could play hostage taker. Oh, please flash in something. Okay, so they do have frilled mystic. Let me think here. Is this worth countering, or can we set up the next turn? Because we play paradise druid, they're just gonna. So even if I play Paradise Druid, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm gonna see if they wanna go ahead and get rid of my Risen Reef. All right, cool, they do. That's good for us. Cause now that that card's gone, we can play Cavalier. We can also freely play Hostage Taker. This turn we are gonna chump block. Question is, which one is worth chump blocking? We could take six here, that's a little brutal. Take three. Hmm, let me think here. I give them the option to get an opt back here. I take six, I go down to seven. This will eventually kill me. But this cleanly answers the Frilled Mystic. Yeah, let's try that. Just take the six. Let's 
Let's see if they have something for this. Alright, nice. We're definitely going to leave this back to block if we can. Nice. Let's leave this back. Sure. So they have their, their night pack ambusher. Get in there for one, friend. Good news is that I get to steal one of these. Potentially. Steal one of those. Let's see if we can. If we can, we get to get one of them back. We get to play them again. We can also just kill this, which is bad news bears for us. Take the action. Get a green. Alright, so they have a lot of wolves. Nice. Okay. Guess we'll get in with the one. Chump everywhere else. They make two wolves a turn. Yeah, get in with the one. I don't think they can attack here, because if they do, I'll gladly send some cards right in front to die. So let's see, how much is this? Two, so three, four, six. We could do it for six. Seven. Three, six, seven. Do it for seven. They can counter it if they want. Looks like they will. Sure, but I get some cards out of this. Perfect. All right, let's see if we can get there. We just need a block. Right, they'll get two wolves out of this. Which is obviously a, a pickle, but... Come on! All right, nice. We're gonna be fine. Yeah, take the action. Enter stepped. Kill that. Kill the other one. I know that resolves. So that's three, six, three, six. Okay, we have like a billion things to block in front of that. So we may as well send these in. This is protection from blue. <laughs> GG's. We're up against Zalem. That last match was quite a slog fest. We went a lot way wider than our opponents, so that's good. Currently 2 and 0 oh right now. Do I want to mulligan? I do. All right, this is much better. We want double black, so I'm going to go ahead and keep that. All right, can we get there? Can we actually keep our Yara. Nope, it's gonna get thought erasured. Alright. So, that being said. I'll play, I'll play Risen Reef. Nice. Let's be mana efficient here. Don't want to overcommit into this board wipe anyways. I will not need to... Let me see here. Put this into place. Tapped. I'm just going to send this in for one damage. Because anything more just means I get cleaned out by a Kaya's Wrath. Absorb? Sure. Cast down. That's pretty good. Sweet. Probably could have attacked first, but whatever. There's the fairy. Sorry. Keep up the pace. Okay. How do we beat this now? Because now they're definitely going to sweep the board. I don't want to play Tatiova unless I have a land. I could have potentially held the land back, drawn it into my hand. So when I play, Ta I could play Tatiova off of uh, the elf. Sure. 
send in some some mana dorks here. I'm getting too old for this. If this isn't getting board wiped, then they don't have it. But I'm very no sure this is getting board wiped. Although I don't know how good we are against board wipes. Ah, there we go. Oh, that's not good. That's really not good. Luckily they whiffed, but that just means they have a concentration of spells in hand. Oh boy. Good news that post board, we I guess we get to find our big old dinos. D spark, sure. Let's see if we can find out if they're hero or not. You know what? I'm not done yet. Like, do they play heroes? Probably not. They probably play Bolas of Citadel and whatnot. All right, let's let's go ahead and just concede here. Keep the information hidden. Keep the information hidden on our, what we're playing. All right. Let's see what we can get into now. Chupacabra does nothing. Hostage Taker does nothing. Masker Girl does nothing. Muldratha. Eh. Dream Eater does reset a Planeswalker, which can be pretty major. Mirror Image a little scary when they can respond and blow our own stuff up. Okay, maybe we don't need Tatiova, or actually, I'd rather have a Tatiova over my third Yarok. Let's try this. They probably think we're on Yarok Field, so they'll try to go and just, like, maybe hold on to, uh, like, maybe they unmoored Ego us or something like that. Sure, I'll keep this. If they if they unmoored Ego the field, that's, like, a free turn, and they discarded a card, so, because we do not have field. However, the only concerning thing here is we need a fourth land to even get to Shifting Ceratops, and they may just discard it. Wish we had a Llanowar Elf in this situation, because that would have been super key. Let's see what they have in hand. Alright, so they do have creatures, things that we'll have to deal with eventually. Doesn't matter, because they'll always have something to do with it. Yeah, it's fine. It doesn't matter. I guess that's like, no, it's not even one less because they're going to have it anyways. Can we get the, I don't want to give them more value though than what they're, they've already got. Yeah, that just gives them more value. If they cry the Carnarium here, it's a lot of value for them. Cool. So they didn't, which means I get to play Shifting Ceratops. Which means they got to spend another turn to deal with this. They could just play the Bell Haunt, but the Bell Haunt's not that crazy for us. Lyra, however, will be a problem, but we'll worry about that later. Sure. I'm going to throw away the Druid in this situation. And now we should be able to put them into a situation where they... They gotta figure out what they're gonna do, right? I mean, they could try to go for the double. The double Cry of the Carnarium. Alright. Let's just start ramping, I guess. Enters tapped. Enters tapped. There goes another Carnage Tyrant. Sure, pass back to them. However, we do need to make sure that we get something on the board now. Or, I mean, like the other Cavalier on board now. There's a strong chance they just get the Binding and then put it on top of the Cavalier. Okay. I mean, I don't care if Cavalier dies, so I'll, I'll block. Sure. It's fine. They get all that back. But good news is that I have another one. Oh no, I want those back. I want those cards back. Come on, let's see what we got here. Alright, Narset. That's a problem. You get to kill Narset, I guess. If they, for some odd reason, decide to go for Kaya's Wrath, we'll just grab Carnage Tyrant. Alright, there's another Narset. Sure. There's no way Binding doesn't eat this Cavalier. This Binding's gotta eat the Cavalier. 
There we go. Cool. All right, let's go to combat first. Get rid of Narset. I won't forget our time together. Play a land. I'm concerned about them finding a board wipe here. So I'm actually just going to pass. Like if they find a Kaya's Wrath, we're super punished. If by overcommitting. There you go. See? So it was better that we didn't. Not that we really have much going on though. We kind of need a little bit of help from our deck. All right, cool. Pass back to the opponent. Hopefully they don't find another board wipe, but if they do, what are you going to do about it anyways? Yep, they found another one. Seems good. Eventually we will find another Carnage Tyrant. Or that's also good. At least we know it resolves. Probably just gets answered, right? I'm pretty sure they have something for this. If I swing it at them, if I kill Narset though, or try to, yeah, there we go. They had something for it anyways. So we need to find another, another one of those. That won't work. That's a three, six, seven, eight. So just do it for eight. We don't draw anything, but that's fine. And a cast down. All right. So unfortunately, we're kind of seeing the holes in the deck, which was my concern, which was all the planeswalkers. Like, thought. how do we beat Esper? Oh, yeah. We don't have an Elder Spell this to come back from that. So I think that pretty much seals the deal, right? I have a plan. Yeah, you got it. I wonder if I could... Let me see here. Let me think. What else can I do? I can tuck something. This doesn't allow him to draw anything. I could have... Actually, I realized I could have played three fairy. Stolen this. Taken it back. Or I can get rid of Cavalier. Or I get rid of the Ixalan's Binding to get my Cavalier back. Interesting. Then I would mill again. Eh, let's just get rid of that. You need to take a time let's get rid of three fairy. Call it a day after that. Cast down. Sure. We're just, we're not able to draw this turn, but it's fine. Skip to the good part. Might be able to just kill them, actually. Think here. Get rid of that. Tucks that to the bottom. All right, let's go. Let's go to combat. Put them down to five. They play to fairy. They bounce anyways. That's a problem. I'll do this. See if it works. I have reached my limit. Hurry! Well, that's a lot of lands. Cause had I just milled, I don't know what that does for us, right? I don't think that does much. Uh, if they no. bounce Excellent their timing. their time, like the the binding back, it's like whatever's. So that's fine. Hopefully they try to bounce it back and thought erasure it. Let's go with that. All right, come on, thought erasure, thought erasure. Go for it. Go for the Thought Erasure, opponent. Oh, gross. Guess I'll just keep drawing, right? Hold that thought. Nice. And now we have a... We actually might be right back in it, thanks to the Thief. So we saw that they had Disdainful Stroke. They could just be dead this turn too, right? Yeah, I think they are. They top that card? Hmm. Not good for us. Nice, and we go to game three. 
Can't complain there. Game three? That's all I can really ask for when it comes to all these planeswalkers they have. Moldratha actually might be pretty good here. Doesn't die to cast down. Lazani doesn't feel great considering that they do have a ton of ways to deal with it. Alright, let's try it again. We have Moldratha. We beat we beat Esper. I can't complain. We got a game three against Esper. Heckin' yeah. <laughs> It hurts. It hurts me on the inside when I have to take a Teferi down. Whether it's fighting a Teferi or doing anything along those lines, I just don't want to deal with Teferis. It feels bad. Like, I want to let the Teferi player have their fun, but the issue is then I don't get to do my jam. Ugh. What a pickle. Good luck, Salem. On to game three. Wow. That is a four drop hand that we cannot keep because it is all four drops. I'm going to push the Yarok to the bottom. Keep. Move Yarok to the bottom. We have a lot of dinos. Michael Ceratops. Let's do this. Ooh, so it looks like they're short. Some blue mana? So we know Narset's not happening. Teferi, probably. Thought Erasure, that's pretty good. It's probably Risen Reef, right? If they, if they take Shifting Ceratops, I think that means I know they have a board wipe. I know what you did last summer. Their hand's probably loaded with, like, discard spells, too, and answers. That's why they kept it. They were tanking on how much they can keep considering the mana base. Yep. All right, so they have an answer, but we make them use it, which is pretty major. Right, cast down. Oh, so they definitely need mana. They definitely need mana. I'm going to just play Prime Speaker. Prime Speaker becomes a must deal with right away. Because if I untap with Prime Speaker, it becomes super problematic. Sure. Seems good. All right, let's see if you have another one. Or an Aether Gust or something crazy. Sweeper. Ixalan's binding. Ooh! That's clutch! That's pretty clutch! So do this for four. Nice. What do they got for me? Cry the Carnarium. It's fine. Now we play Ashiok. Ashiok will start milling them. Sure you were looking for that. Okay, let's find out. Nice, and we got there. <laughs> Greyhound OG. Alright. Let's battle. Uh, we don't have a turn one because of the fact that we don't... Oh, do I dare? Like, this would be a turn two Llanowar Elf. Ah, but we, ha we, we could catch up, right? Because we get Llanowar Elves, plus we also have Risen Reef. Let's just see if we get there. I mean, at the very worst... Eh. We okay, right? I mean, like, whatever. Um, let's go. With Hinterland Harbor. We have all the black sources we need. That's pretty chill. Oh, it's Grixis. No! It's Thought Erasure time. Well, they know what we're playing. Although, you know, I have to say, I'm very happy about the turn of events here. We got paired against Esper, round three. Gotta love Esper. And now we're getting paired against Grixis. You know, that's, that's my jam. I gotta say, I, I love you for playing it, bud. Grixis player, that's a good per that's a good person to me in my book. <laughs> Cause I do love me some Grixis. I think my elf is gonna die. Weird. What should I do? Should I play Fibblethep or Paradise Druid? Paradise Druid lets me go into Massacre Girl, but that doesn't really do much. Right, we'll go ahead and just play Drown Catacomb. Nicholas Bolas coming coming down potentially this turn. I've been playing a ton of standard 2020, so uh, for for the event I just partook in, which by now uh, you'll have already seen it, but I battled Seth first round, and that was quite unfortunate for me. But yeah, like I just I'm not playing around some things just because I've I've gotten used to the rotation format. Hopefully that doesn't bite me in the butt here. All right, here comes hope. Okay, cool. So yeah, they. Checklands are still here, so they can get Bolas a lot easier. 
am I going to die right now? Thief of Sanity. Alright, let's sack Massacre Girl, which kills my, like, both everything, but at least we get to go up to the a six slot, which I'm okay with. How many creatures do we have in the yard? They bedevil that quite easily, if they don't have bedevil. I need to look at the battlefield here. They don't have bedevil. They definitely have a sweeper. I could see them having a sweeper. I'm gonna go with Moldroth on this one. They probably just, they could have both. I mean, that's just a thing that I'll have to like deal with, but eh. I just hope they're sitting on like, cry in the Carnariums and stuff like that. Red Horde Butcher, and it's fine. What can I do here? I could go Prime Speaker. I go Yarok. Yarok allows me to play some more big money things. I could also steal their Kefnet, actually. Yeah, let's just go ahead and go for that. Try to steal their creatures. See if they block. I mean, I see no reason for them not to. Yeah, all right. I mean, we know they're playing Kefnet. All right, nice. Sure. They sent in the Dreadhorde Butcher. That one damage can go wherever they want it to. I don't care. My face probably is the place they want to go. Interesting. Hold on, hold on. Actually, let's cancel that real quick. We have a two drop here. Very nice. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and play this Risen Reef. Nice. Then I'm going to sack Yarok. Or, I mean, a that for Agent of Treachery. To steal their Kefnet. And now, we're good. And we got there. I like it. Give me that, Kevin. Kevin comes home. Kevin comes to my side of the field, and I'm okay with that. Alright, so they're definitely the mid-range version of Grixis. One would say I've seen this deck before. Hmm. <laughs> Gotta watch out for Creature Bolus. I really wish we had more Nullhide Ferox. In this situation, pretty much. Any other situation, it's kind of medium, but whatever. Massacre Girl, killing off the Kefnet was huge that turn, because maybe they could have gotten more value, so that worked out perfectly. Um, do I want Azani? Not really. Spark Double against a deck that's loaded with removal spells, kind of scary. Probably don't want too many Llanowar Elves or this Fibblethep. Yeah, I'll take out Spark Double. Hostage Taker seems medium here, so I'll take out one. Maybe we'll see if I need to take or bring in Ashiok, but seems unlikely. Okay, good luck, opponent. Wow, now I must fight Grixis, my Grixis Binder, my other favorite. How could they do this to me? Okay, this might just be greedy because we have the Nullhide Ferox, but <laughs> you know I'm going to play it. Oop. You know I got to play it. And they see our hands, so they know how greedy we are. <laughs> oh, boy. We are so greedy. <laughs> I guess now if they play Creature Bolas, though, they're not going to have a great time with that if they play Creature Bolas. Oh, no. Maybe they'll take Nullhide Ferox and just like, ah, well, you know, it gets rid of the threat if you take it, if you rip it from my hands. So that's pretty cool. And remember, though they don't have many creatures, there's also a line where we could maybe play Hostage Taker as a way to eat one of our own creatures as board wipe secure, like security. All right, so I think we're going to lose Carnage Tyrant here. I mean, they have to play all that discard, right? And then rip all of our uncounterable threats, but... So here comes Big Bolus, I think. So I'm going to actually play the Nullhide Ferox here. Ooh. Actually, do I play Nullhide Ferox here? Yeah, because if they have a creature, a Planeswalker Bolus, we can rip it from their hand. Ooh. Which one answers at instant speed? This makes them use their blue mana. Not that it really matters. We'll, we'll make them use the instant speed spell. Oh, no way. 
No way. Oh, that's such a good draw from them. Oh. That was like the only line that punished me is if they drew it off the top. Ah, oh, what a bummer. What a bummer. I mean, they pay two, they blow up Nullhide Ferox. Can I just not exile something? I'll get rid of a uh, hostage taker. My intellect is without limit. Oh, what a sick rip from them, though. Oh, that was so clutch, them getting that. That was gross. So do they have, like, a cast down or something? I don't think so, right? Let's kill Bolas. Or try to. My schemes have been foiled. But yeah, for me, opponent. Nice! And we got there. Volia, Volia, good luck. This is our last round here. Can we get a clean 5-0? and oh? We've just kind of swept through. So I'm a fan. It's fun. We've gotten lucky we've dodged Esper and Kethis. Because I think, like, Kethis destroys us. I mean, I'm going to attack because I can. Probably should have attacked first. This way, if they feel like they need to do anything, they'll, like, you know, like, uh, blow my stuff up. They would have done it then fine oh crap I accidentally clicked through my attack step oh boy about to get super punished oh what really awesome enters tapped we got the other black source I like it we got pretty lucky there <laughs> had we lost the paradise druid I think this would have been a different story We'd be way farther behind. And we would have had to have taken two to play the Cavalier of Druid, uh, Thorns. Risk factor, I'm just going to take four every step of the way. Oh boy, down to seven. Let's see how this goes. Do we have life gain? Chain Whirler, blow me out. Oh, we do. It's just unfortunate that it's a little bit delayed, but yeah, we do. This is 7, this is 9. So if I do this, I put them down to 10. I don't think it changes anything. But at this point, I think if they're going to use burn, they're going to use it on me and not my, my mana dork that has already gotten me the value. Yep, down to 4. Alright, so we're at 1 pretty much. Okay. Yep, we're pretty much at one. Sure. That was not what I wanted. It's my out here. This puts them at one. Like, we don't have enough instants and sorceries to give this haste, which is the bummer. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, we're at one. We're dead to everything. So they just have to have, like, two lands or we're dead. But I doubt that. Yeah. Seems about right. Wow. They had a pretty good start there. Like, I'm not going to let the red deck draw cards. So, obviously, I needed to make sure that I, I burnt them out there. Or, I mean, I, I just didn't let them draw cards there. Ceratops. So, big beaters. Big booty beaters. Your image, not good here. Land or Elf, really skeptical about that anything with one toughness i'm skeptical about like only risen reef is like the thing that i'm okay with prime speaker seems a little slow biogenic ooze a little bit slow tatiova will be important dream eater azani is nice as it is life gain Moldratha. these are the things that i don't feel like i want a ton of huh two four is nice a two four is nice but then we load it up with too many four drops so we want to find something cheaper i guess kite sail freebooter go up to the playset, eat all their burn spells hopefully buy enough time and they're not as, like, you know, bad over, like, a discard spell because they're still a flying body. I'll try it. So if I shock, what's the biggest thing that happens for us? I think it's all the same. Uh, I'll try it. Whatever. I probably don't need to shock, but this makes them either have shock or fanatical firebrand, which they probably will have something along those lines. All right. So once again, should have attacked first, draw out the shock. At least now I get to go, like, double spell. Pretty important here. 
Even better, I now can play Steamkin. We are now behind on mana. How is that? I guess we could rip from their hand. But we can't rip Chain Whirler from their hand. I gotta get rid of Steamkin. Please don't Chain Whirl me, because I'm missing mana. Their hand is somewhat slow, because they didn't have a one drop. Don't Chain Whirl me, please. Oh, Lord. Well, at least I know they don't have Chain Whirler, because they would have definitely done something then, right? Sure. All these burn spells. That's a thing. Yo, where's my mana at? Let's take a look. They don't have any wizards. They have to pay full cost for light up the stage. I'll do that. Because now this means they have to spend a burn spell. Or they can, sure, they can deal me six, but they have to spend a burn spell on Kite Sail Freebooter. Oh, come on. That's so clutch from them. Oh, boy. Well, I tried. I think I'm going to go ahead and steal something from them again. All right, we'll make it so that they don't get too much value off that Chain Whirler. All right, Chain Whirler comes down. Skewer would have been one ma like one mana, so I didn't want that. Sure, in this situation, they can, I guess, like, Wizard's Lightning Bolt or something like that. Obviously not going to block. Come on, dig for a land here, deck. Give me a land so we can at least push it to the next game. Enters tapped. Cool beans. I'm going to go to combat. This shows that I'm obviously not going to be blocking with this anytime soon. And I'm going to send the Ravenous Chupacabra in front of the Lava Runner if they attack. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Seems good. All right. Land off the top, please. Game, please. Stop doing this. <laughs> Don't do this to me, game. Don't do this to me. All right. We got to dig for lands here. I guess uh, that's not on the menu today, huh? Can we take five? I mean, I know I'm not blocking with that, so I guess I am taking five. Oh, boy. Take the three. Game, please. All right, I'm just going to play Shifting Ceratops. At least this is a solid body that can block. And if they spend more burn on it, that's fine. Budge. I mean, yeah, we got to take the four, right? This card again, I go down to five. Yeah, you got it. Please don't be a shock land off the top. Game. Please. I'm begging you. I'm begging you, game. Stop. Chain Whirler wrecks me. I have to leave this back. Like, if they draw a Chain Whirler, we're dead. At any point, if we lose this uh, freebooter, we're in trouble. Ah, oh, right on time. All right, please don't burn me out. Please don't burn me out. Please don't burn me out. Let me just get it. Well, at least game two, so we can go to game three. Nice. I'm so scared to even try that nonsense. Like, if I play Hostage Taker... <laughs> Let's see what they got. Another mountain or something? Okay, cool. Sure. I'll take them both. Why not? Why not? Alright, so at least we got three health back, right? That's got to count for something. Yes! Alright! Nice! We got there! <laughs> oh, man. That was so close. <laughs> we super just almost died. Do we have any more ways to gain a ton of life? I guess, you know what? Muldratha might be what we need, unfortunately. On the draw, really don't like Llanowar Elves. Don't want to, like, I, I don't need a, a full play set. I mean, I barely even want three. I, I think maybe the right number would have been to gone down to two, but... Come on, mana ramp. Holy mother of mana ramp. Okay. This is very slow. But I'll try it. Alright, they don't have a turn one play, which is huge. They've kind of been devoid of turn one plays, actually. And, I, and I'm okay with that. 
Don't get me wrong, I'm not mad. Ooh, and they missed a land drop. And now we're ahead? That's not looking good. Because I'm just going to immediately slam Nullhide Ferox to the board. Alright, they're just going to take six to the face. I have no complaints about that. Alright, they're going to take eight. Their turn. Looks like we're going to get a potential, what is a 5-0 and oh here? Uh, yeah, okay. Oof. Sure. I'll just play this again. Alright, and we get 5-0. and oh. <laughs> I can't complain about how we uh, completed that league there. That's a solid and very clean 5-0. and oh. We got lucky. We dodged uh, what would be Kethis decks. We played one Esper deck, but luckily we were able to like just sneak that matchup out there. We took games two and three. I can't imagine those matchups being good for us because, first off, the fact that we have all these creatures and you know they can just cleanly sweep the board it can be a problem. So maybe moving forward, I'd like to find a way to help our Esper matchup. And of course, I mean Kethis will just rotate, so I mean we don't have to worry about Kethis post rotation. Uh, and maybe Prime Speaker Vanifar becomes quite the powerhouse as a mid-range deck post-rotation. Uh, we, we got lucky, though. We dodged a few matchups, and, you know, un unfortunately, some opponents had some mana issues along the way. So, nonetheless, the deck did perform. We definitely outgrinded opponents uh, in what looked like a grim situation. Cards like Agent of Treachery really shined. Moldratha, things like that. Maybe we should just play another Agent of Treachery, by the way, somewhere in the 75 um, and yeah, I enjoyed the deck a lot, and I enjoyed it for a deck with absolutely no spells, which is weird to me. Maybe maybe I'm just a mid-range player that didn't know he was a mid-range player. Whoa. Nonetheless, thank you so much for watching another episode of Fish 5-0. Thank you for submitting this list, I roll 20s It served us well, got us a clean 5-0. and And of course, if you enjoy the content we make here at mtggoldfish.com, Make sure you leave a like and a sub. Hit the bell icon to be notified when a brand new video comes up on the website. Other than that, thank you as always for supporting me and watching all the content here on MTG Goldfish. Uh, and, and yeah, seriously, thanks for just however you choose to enjoy my content. Thank you for doing it. And I'll see you back here at the next one. So that means your friendly neighborhood Asian Avenger signing out. And uh, see you, I guess, in what would be Throne of Eldraine pretty soon. Love ya. Peace. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.